I'm just continuing my series of the 10 tools that you need, or the 8 plus 2 tools I call it, because there's really 8 tools plus 2 items. In part 1, we talked about the top 2 tools, the machete and the small axe. They're your heavy tools for heavy work, and heavy work is basically chopping. Chopping small trees, branches, building shelters, creating fuel for a fire, and perhaps doing um, heavier um, woodworking tasks out there in the bush. Machete, of course, is a heavy-duty machete. I'm not talking about any machete out there. And it just pips a small axe into number one because I think a machete is a bit more dependable and a bit more versatile than a small axe. A machete is going to be more dependable because if it's a heavy-duty, tough, dependable machete, it won't break. I've still got question marks about a small axe handles breaking and the axe heads coming off. That's why it pips the small axe into number one. And it's a bit more versatile because if you maintain a sharp portion on the, of the blade, either near the handle or at the very tip, and do the heavy work in the middle of the blade, you might still do those finer carving tasks and skinning tasks and so forth, which maybe you can't do so easily with a small axe. So that's the top two tools. We'll look at three to four now. And this is your top four tools. Number three is going to be your main working knife. That concept I've discussed in a previous video in this playlist. A main working knife, a six inch blade is enough. Four tang and a thick blade. There's more features, but they're the basic um, summary features. The features I talk about in the previous video. As long as it's teamed up with a machete and or a small axe, a heavy tool, a six inch blade is just fine. This happens to be um, a bushcraft knife I get here in Thailand. It's got a clip point. A lot of people out there don't like clip points. Ignore that for the time being. This happens to be a seven inch version, but again a six inch blade is enough as your main working knife. And the main working knife or your main bushcraft knife is a blade you're going to have you wear on your hip it's just your typical blade you work on your hip for most jobs you're going to do out there. And your main working knife does your medium work. That's basically batoning, or your batoning, um, fuel for a fire, and so forth. We'll leave 3A for the time being and talk about number 4. So number 4 is going to be a smaller working knife. Again, a concept I've talked about in a previous video in this playlist. And here's an example of a smaller working knife. I'm not saying you have to have this. It's just an example. It happens to be a Mueller knife, four and a half inch blade with a rut tail tang coming into the handle with a couple of bolts there. Just a really good um, knife for, you know, 99% of the jobs you're going to do out there, all your smaller jobs, and in an emergency. I'm talking about emergencies, unplanned emergencies. I might be able to, you know, baton a bit of wood. You can imagine two, three inch pieces of wood. Um, I can still in emergencies, but mainly for all your smaller, light jobs, a bit more kick ass than um, smaller knives you can get. So they're the top four tools. The machete and small axe, your top two tools, your heavy tools for your heavy jobs. Then three and four, your medium tools, I guess, for your medium work. Now the very last point that I want to make is the 3A category. I've talked about this tool as an example in a previous video, a two part video in this playlist. This happens to be a nine inch blade and I call it a chopping tool. Now when I talk about a 3A chopping tool, I'm not talking about again this knife, but I think there are many knives out there of a similar ilk like this. It's something a bit more kick ass than your main bushcraft knife where you can do chopping work with it. I regard this as being a main working knife. It's just a main working knife beefed up maybe on steroids. That's why it's 3A. It's still a part of the main working knife category three. That's the whole point. I don't regard this as being a machete because you might may be asking, well, why don't you just take a machete? That's fine. If you do that, you comply with my requirements anyway. But I don't put this in the machete category, the heavy duty category, because I have question marks about these sorts of things, doing heavy work, chopping work all day, every day. But it's going to give you the ability to do some chopping work, perhaps in the short term, in emergency scenarios. If you have to build a shelter or something, you can do some chopping. It gives you some chopping ability. But I don't put that into the machete heavy category. That's why I've created 3A, and it's still part of three, which is the main working knife. And the reason for this is, if you're not taking 
one or both of those top two heavy tools, then you really should beef up your main working knife to something like this, where you can do some chopping work, at least for the short term in emergencies. Then you don't even have to take your main working knife. But if you take one of those top two tools, you don't have to take that. You can if you want, but you don't have to. Then you can have your main working knife as your six inch blade, like I said, and you've got one, one or both of those top two tools for the heavy work. And you have to have the ability to do chopping. You've got your top two tools, then your main working knife. If you're not taking the top two tools, you've got the chopping tool for some chopping for the short term, then your smaller working knife, just like that, and they're your top four tools in my opinion. If you've got those top four tools, you're laughing, you can pretty much do everything under the sun. We'll move on now to and round out the top 10 tools.